بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ألهمنا مراشد أمورنا وأعيذنا من شرور أنفسنا قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المؤمن معلف ولا خير في من لا يعلف ولا يؤلف أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام The first is regarding the topic and how Hazrat Marana explained it. He said, how do we make our marriages heaven on earth? And normally how people will always ask, if you change that wording slightly and you say, how you put spice in your marriage. That's when even the old man becomes young. Because spice is a word everyone wants. But we're going to change this topic a little. That not only how to create your marriage heaven on earth, rather how to create your life heaven on earth. The reason is because some people think that only with marriage I can get heaven. And when they get married, they don't find heaven. And before marriage, they think you can't get heaven. Whereas heaven got nothing to do with marriage. And hell got nothing to do with marriage also. Some people get married and they say this is the end. But it got nothing to do with marriage. It got to do with life. That there are some people لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا Allah says they're not going to love, they're not dead also. Whatever condition we put them, they'll never be happy. It makes no difference because amongst the Anbiya alayhim salam there were those that got married and they were happy. And there were those that never got married and they were also happy. Sometimes you will meet a person, he's not married. But it doesn't mean he's happy. And sometimes you will meet a man, normally we get thrilled when we meet a man who got three wives. Because a lot of times what man can't eat, he gets happy if you see somebody else eating it. But when you ask him sometimes, it doesn't mean the more wives, the more happiness. Marriage doesn't bring happiness and not being married doesn't bring sadness. And the other way around. What brings in life happiness and sadness got nothing to do with the things of this world. You say to a person, that see this meal how it's made. Everything is in this. So if that young child says, Daddy, why can't mommy cook like this? So if you want that meal, will you go out and say, what stove that auntie used? I will buy that stove. And what rice she used, I will buy that rice. And you will look at everything on the ground and you will see perhaps your wife got even better than that woman. There are some people who are making that dish with no stove also. There are some making it with the fire. There are some making it underground. I went to one place, they showed me a braai underground. That they dig. And then they put the meat underground. And how that comes out. So no stove. No pot. Everyone knows what made the meal really was spice that came from on top. Without that which came from on top, nothing happened from the things that were given from the ground. Happiness in life and sadness in life, Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam taught when he said, it is Allah who makes smile, it is Allah who makes cry. Adhaka wa abka. It is my Allah who makes smile, it is my Allah who makes cry. But because that amount of yaqeen which Ibrahim alayhi salam said it with, we don't have that. So a lot of times the last thing we worry about in marriage is the spice. So the first will be get the stove, whereas the stove never made that thing so tasty. Get the rice. But the spice... Sometimes the whole meal is made. After it's made, we forgot the spice. At that time to say, it brings some salt. That's what many a time we do. We enter into a marriage, but there was no dua before that. Or maybe we made a lot of dua when we were getting married. 
Why? Because I never knew the girl. So it was a scary road. That's the only time in life man makes istikhara. Why? Because it's dua. So before getting married, I don't know what I'm going into. But what man forgot is that the dua for happiness was not supposed to be a once-off. Because every meal needs new spice. Every day in our life is a spice. is not going to make me smile tomorrow. So how yesterday that auntie who threw that wonderful spice was not going to make the mutton of next week tasty. Next week that man or woman had to throw spice again. As that person made dua when he was getting married. There is a reason why did he stop making dua after he got married. As though he felt that now that little spice that came is enough. Now I just need to make sure my stove is working. I just need to make sure my rice is in place. As for the spice, whether it comes or doesn't come, the meal is ready. And that is where everyone finds heaven on earth doesn't come. Because it all comes from above. And it comes from above when the eye is always looking above. The day man's eye turns away from Almighty Allah. To keep that connection, Allah Taala turns his special nazar away from the man. The other day in a majlis in the madrasa we gave this example. Many people took on to it, so I will mention it. It goes a little detail. But understand this and understand where you will find it. Nabi Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam is Allah's beloved. While he is with his father in the house protected the most beloved. Everything he understands will happen in the house. Because of that slight nazar away from Almighty Allah. Now a Nabi's nazar, slight nazar going from Allah is not like ours. Ours never sits on Allah. But a Nabi is taken to task on very small matters to give a message to us. That Ibrahim Nabi Yusuf salam's focus on his family. Allah Tabarukullah was going to take him out of that house. When he was protected in the house, that was his heaven on earth. He himself was going to say to his father, Daddy, can't I go with my brothers? As soon as that nazar came on the family, Nabi Yusuf salam had to be taken out of that family. When Yusuf salam was thrown in the well, at that time in the well, there was no one to put nazar on but the zat of Allah. In the darkness of the well, everything happened. Suddenly Yusuf salam hears a caravan going past which would not normally pass. They find a well. They need water off the well. Send the bucket down. Everything happened because one nazar went to the zat of Allah. Everything happened. But as soon as the bucket came, it's a natural habit of man. That as soon as you see some aid coming, help coming, like when a man is sick and every door closes, you will find the dua you make at that time, there is no other dua like that. But suddenly one person phones and he says, Hey, I got the appointment for you. And immediately the nazar turns back now. Whereas everything was happening in that condition, the appointment also came because of that. But as soon as that nazar fell, Yusuf salam came out of the well as he was lifting his nazar would have normally, naturally gone, that when I come out, the man will say, let me take you home. As soon as he came out, the man said, Ya Bushra, wow, I got a boy, grabbed him. Yusuf Ali said, what's happening? They covered him, no one must see him. And where he really thought the person will take me home, that same person who he put his trust on took him further from home. Yusuf alayhi salam lands up in the markets of Egypt. Now there is no father. Now there is no hope. At the time when you're going to be sold in the market, you're either going to be now cleaning someone's horse, and if you don't do a good job, you'll get it. Or you'll clean someone's stable, or you'll be working in the field. When there was no place to put nazar, the nazar of Yusuf alayhi salam would go only and solely on the zat of Allah. Suddenly the minister of the king will be brought by Allah. Heaven on earth, everything falls, but it falls when the eye goes up towards the heaven. 
The minister of the king is passing. He also sees that day he is deciding that I need a boy who can be my secretary. I don't need a slave. I need someone who is unique. And his nazar will fall on Yusuf a.s. Why? Because when Allah wants it to happen, the things you never thought will happen, will happen. Why I'm saying the sentence, what you thought will never happen, happen. There are many people in the world who say that the only way I'll get heaven on earth is if I change my wife. Because in heaven there's whores. If the wife is there, the whore, then you get heaven. And if you say Allah can change, there are some people who say, you don't know my wife. She can't change. When Allah's nazar falls, the unexpected happens. What you never thought becomes reality. Where you never saw doors, doors created. Where you thought it was a wall, it opens up. Allah's system was that when dua is made, things which go against the whole system of the world happens. And that man finds, because heaven is not of earth. Heaven is heaven, earth is earth. Earth is a place of calamities and problems, sickness and trouble. To be unfaithful is natural, it's part of the earth. To cheat, to lie, to swear, that is all part of the earth, to kill. The amazing part is that I'm not killing you, you're not killing me. Whereas the nature of man, but there was something that stopped us from being natural. It made us different, unnatural. It was the nature of man, you see money there, you take it in your pocket. Because everyone wants to get rich. You see a woman, she must be a woman. It was unnatural for man, a woman walked past somebody else's wife, he said, no, it's his wife, not for me. I'll look down. It was unnatural. The nature of the earth demanded, be like an animal. An animal doesn't worry of laws. But what made me and you different? Allah Tabarakullah in Quran says, Allah revealed something called justice. When justice was revealed, we as South Africa, we say there's a lot of crime. But the normal would have been, there's supposed to be full crime. Every man who sees you is supposed to be ready to take out a gun and blast you. But Allah created something called justice that even a non-Muslim, he will see a person and he will say it's not right to harm him. But what made him say it? Heaven came on earth. The opposite happened. Now when we want in our lives proper heaven to come, this nazar has to go back to the heavens. Yusuf alayhi salam in the market of Egypt had no one to put his eye on. So the eye goes on Allah. And the minister of the king will be brought there. The minister of the king realizes, I need someone to look after. The minister of the king falls in love with Yusuf. It is against the norm that the master falls in love with the slave. A slave has to become diehard for the master. Never did a master walk home, enter the house and say to his wife, Akrimi, make the ikram of this boy. Ikram is a guest, you make the ikram of a guest. When the nazar hit the arsh of Allah, the unnatural, the opposite became normal. Yusuf alayhi salam in a house where he thought he will be slapped and hit. He became the prince. And where were these brothers he thought he will be honored and looked after, they hit. When man trusted the world, the world stabbed. When man learned you cannot look at this world, the whole world came running behind. You want heaven on earth, this I have to go back to the heavens. Yusuf alayhi salam as he grew up in the house, finally a time comes where the only person you trust the most is your mother. Who else you going to trust? You trust your mother. The wife of the minister was like a mother for Yusuf alayhi salam. He trusted her, the one he trusted, she became the means of life becoming hard for him in the house. She called him, she invited him. It became hard, finally she said, if you don't listen, go to the jail. He said, I'll go jail. When he landed in the jail, the jail is wall again. In a jail your nazar cannot go anywhere. Are you going to ask the guard? 
If it was South Africa jail, you can ask the guard, let me out, he let you out. But in the jail, you won't ask. In the jail, the nazar went on Allah. The people of the jail came to Yusuf While he was in the house of the palace, the house of the minister, he was a prince but he could not give dawat. He was under the boss. When he came in a jail, in a place where he thought, I can do nothing, Allah Taala made everything happen. Nabi Yusuf can now give free dawat. The people are coming towards him, he doesn't have to go looking while you listen to my dawat. They got a dream, they said, we heard you know the interpretation of dreams. When Nazar went on Allah, even in a jail, the people of the jail came running to him. They say, Ahabbahu ahalu sijn. People of a jail are normally hard people. Nazar went on Allah, the hard people fell in love with Yusuf a.s. Hard people. Yusuf a.s. gives an interpretation. He says to the one, it seems you're going to go free. And you will land up on the side of the king. Every day the king needs a drink, you will be pouring. So long you're going to be by the king, it's natural you'll tell the person, one day you get the chance, tell the king, you know, check up the story. Just do a reinvestigation. There's an innocent man in the prison. For me and you, this is known as use the asbab because it is sunnah. Use the asbab, the means, the means are sunnah. Nabi Yusuf a.s. only used a sunnah means. But a Nabi is taken to task on small things and to give us a message. Yusuf a.s. just said to him, remember me. Allah Taala says, we made it happen that shaitan made that man forget. How could you forget the man who told you you're going to go free? You're supposed to remember it every day. I was in jail, I had a dream. I went to a boy called Yusuf. He told me, you're going free. This is not something you can forget. But when Allah wanted it to be forgotten, it was forgotten. And when Allah wanted it to be remembered... Suddenly when Yusuf a.s. got no hope, when the nazar is not at all on the world and it goes back to the arsh, the king of the time has a dream and he needs Yusuf now. He calls the people of the court, he says, I had a dream. No one knows the interpretation, the man on the side says, hey I remember, after years, when the world was not looked at, Jannah came to the world. And as soon as the world became the object, then Jahannam fell with it. Allah's Nabi Wasallam said, this world and the year after is like co-wives. If you're going to make one happy, you will have to harm the other. Then he said, so now choose which one you want to make happy and which one you want to harm. فَآثِرُوا مَا أَبْقَى عَلَى مَا يَفْنَى فَآثِرُوا عَلَى فَآثِرُوا مَا يَبْقَى he said, one is going to remain, give preference to that. Meaning what? You're driving your car, there's two ways you can drive. If you put your world in front of you, even if you drive slowly, in your mirror you will see Jannah going further and further away. But which Jannah? I'm not speaking of that Jannah. I'm speaking of the Jannah, Morana said, heaven on earth. You will not get heaven on earth if earth becomes your maqsad. As soon as we drive towards earth, heaven goes away. If that heaven is going away, the heaven on earth is not going to come at all. Because this is not the place for it. But if a person turns his car around and he says, I am driving towards paradise, you will see in your mirror, the world will come behind you. Like that irritating police officer. When you want to speed and you see him behind, you just need to get him out of sight. But every time you take that turn, you see he pitched up also. You can't get him off you. The world you will never get off your tail. But the day you turn to drive towards the world, day by day, heaven will go further, further, further. Heaven on earth, whether it's marriage, whether it's life, it comes when this eye connects back with Allah Taala, And we all need it. It is not that a Moana got a Alima wife and then life is life. But the spice is from the heavens. 
If it falls, a person living in a tent can be smiling. And if it doesn't fall, the person living in a palace can be frowning. Why? Because the stove and the pot doesn't make the meal. It needs spice from above. Continuous looking. So as I mentioned, we made dua before we got married. That dua sometimes brought us to where we were. There was a lot of dua at the beginning. Mommy made dua, daddy made dua. But everyone thought that as soon as they get married, it's called. He said, we called a big sheikh from India. He made the nikah. That Morana, when he makes a nikah, they will never divorce. Doesn't work like that. That Morana also, if he takes the rice and he puts it in the pot, and he puts it on that stove, but there is no spice from above. Whether it's a Morana, whether it's Morana's wife, the spice comes from Allah. No sheikh will give you happiness in your marriage. No taweez will give you happiness in your marriage. Everything comes from the zat of Allah. And that dua has to be always, Oh Allah, we can't force Allah, but we can ask Allah. So sometimes the dua we made before getting married, it pushed us for at least seven, eight, nine years. And thereafter you hear people saying that, you know, now it seems like the spice has just gone out. It's, the spice never go out. You never ask for spice to be put in. You were living with old spice. So a time comes that you yourself start feeling, I need something new. But instead of saying, I need spice, the man says, I need new rice. So he says, change the wife. Or the wife says, change the husband. Because the nazar is always on the ground. So the man to get a new wife is very easy as long as she don't find out. We are living in the time for the woman to get a new man is also very easy. It's all happening. Why? Because they are all missing something. Because in that food there is no taste. But to get that taste they also forgot that the taste doesn't come from the ground, it comes from above. So no matter how many ingredients you will carry on changing, how many stoves you will change, how many kitchens you will make up, how many new houses you will build, how many new cars you will bring, as long as it doesn't come from Allah, you will never find it in your life. Heaven comes from the creator of heavens. It will land on earth, although heavens and earth don't go together. But Almighty Allah will allow it to come. But it comes to the man who drives towards Jannah. When he drives towards paradise, so your son wants to get married, your daughter wants to get married. It's the time of a proposal. So when that young boy comes, normally what we look at from the window, we look at what car is coming with. We look at what his clothing is. As soon as he comes, we ask him, you got your own house boy? So boy said, no, at the moment I'm working. I just started working. You just started, how much you earn? Another boy said, I'm studying. Father is just quiet. He's studying. In his mind he's going, if you're studying, how are you going to look after my daughter? So I'm going to go on to this point in the woman's bayan, I mentioned it. May Allah Park put it in your hearts, put it in our hearts. You see your daughter when the time comes to get married and your son, it got nothing to do with age, it got to do with desire. It got nothing to do with age, it got to do with desire. Sometimes a boy doesn't get desire. So he reaches the age of 35 and the father comes and says, just speak to this person, he's not getting married. So our answer is, if he's living a pure life, there were many great people in the past who never got married also. If he's happy, not married, why you want to put him in marriage? He's happy already. Marriage is supposed to give happiness. He's pure, he's okay, leave him. Because perhaps he can't get along with a girl. And you force him into the marriage, it's like you throw a boy who doesn't want to jump in the swimming pool. You can say how much you want, the water is wonderful, he doesn't want to go in, leave him. He's happy where he is. But then you get a young child who says, Daddy, I want to get married. The girl says, There we say, no, you're too young. So it got nothing to do with age. It got to do with desire. She can be 15 and 16 and she needs to get married and she says it. When she says she needs to get married, what she means, what he means, 
She doesn't mean she doesn't like your roof. She likes your roof. She grew up in your house. She loves your house. It doesn't mean she doesn't love you and mommy anymore. It doesn't mean she wants to run away from her brothers. She's enjoying all. She likes the food you got. Everything is good. And she doesn't want to leave it. But what she's trying to say to you, Daddy, at night when I'm going in my bedroom, I'm getting filled with thoughts. Those thoughts, your roof is not sorting out. And your food is not sorting out. Your car is not sorting out. But when she says that to the father, the father thinks, when she says, I want to get married, means I want a new house. So he says, okay, let a boy come who can afford a new house. Because my daughter wants a house. So when the boy says, I'm still studying, she says, how are you going to look after my daughter? So if the boy is studying, you look after your daughter. For the last 16 years you looked after, you say to another 4 years, I'll also look after you. He stays at home, she stays at home. Same food, she doesn't want to leave your food. She doesn't want to leave your roof. But why is it when she says I want to get married, it means I want out of the house. She never said that. So the boy doesn't have to have a job who can afford a new house. If he hasn't got a house until then, stay in daddy's house. All that boy needs is, will he be able to give the comfort to my girl at a time when I can't give the comfort? That got nothing to do with a car, it got nothing to do with a roof, it got to do with a boy, and it got to do with a girl. He needs someone who he can message at night and he can know it's halal and tayyibah. That's all. Even if he only got five rand credit and free whatsapps. That's all he needs. He doesn't need a job. But in our mind, marriage got a different meaning. So, so much of haram takes place, so much of haram, that we allow the entire Jahannam to join with earth. And after Jahannam joined with earth, and then at the time of marriage we say, Oh Allah, let heaven come on earth. Jahannam is already there, they are already burnt. They have done everything wrong already. That meal, trusting that stove and trusting that rice, that auntie never knew how to cook. Everything burnt. After it all burnt, they said, tell one sheikh, please throw some spice on top that the guests are coming. The sheikh will say, I can bring Jannah to you, but Jahannam is already here. Jahannam is already here. Ali radiallahu anh comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, it seems you have come to ask for my daughter in marriage. <coughs> Ali radiallahu anh is quiet. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, what you got is dowry, mehr. He says, I got nothing. He never have mehr. Forget a house. Forget a job. He never have dowry. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, didn't I give you one shield as a gift? The father-in-law gave the dowry. Didn't I give you? Think if you can do this. Your daughter wants to get married. Lord people say we can't find good boys. There's lot good boys there. But all the good boys don't have good jobs. And those that got good jobs sometimes are not good boys. So if there's a good boy, you be a good father-in-law. You go to the boy... And you say that, would you not like to get married to my daughter? Some people think that's a disgrace that. Nabi Sallallahu words to Ali radiallahu anh, you want something, Ali radiallahu anh is quiet. He says, perhaps you came to ask for my daughter's hand in marriage. He had already told other sahaba radiallahu anh to send Ali radiallahu anh. Musa alayhi salam's father-in-law went to Musa alayhi salam. He said, a thought came in my mind, I got two daughters, I want to get one married to you. Umar radiallahu anh came, he said, my daughter Hafsa, I need someone to marry her. He approaches Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, he approaches Umar radiallahu anh, Usman radiallahu anh. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is interested, they did not find it hard to go and say, I got a girl at home ready to get married. Sometimes the good boy doesn't have a good job. So you go to him. So the first thing he'll say, but I got no money. 
The answer will be, my daughter doesn't need money. She got law authority. I've looked at you after 16 years. Can't I look after one more year? Problem is, money is not going to give her happiness now. She's looking for her husband. That's what, that's what you can be. So he said, I got no mayor. Allah's Nabi says, where's the shield I gave you? He said, go and sell the shield. As he goes out, Suman radiallahu anh sees him. He sees him worried. He asks, what's happening? He said, I need to sell my shield. He said, a mujahid selling a shield. He said, I need it as dowry. Usman radiallahu anh says, I'll buy the shield from you. That was the mayor of Hazrat Fatima radiallahu anha, the money of Usman radiallahu anh. Before Ali radiallahu anh can leave, Usman radiallahu anh will tell him, when a person gets married, you give some hadiyah. He said, I need to give you an hadiyah also, please accept, here's a hadiyah for you, the shield also. When he comes back, Nabi Sallallahu smiles. He sees money, he sees the shield also. He says, how this happened? That you went to sell the shield to get money, you came back with the money, with the shield. He said, I met Usman, that was the answer. That when I met Usman, Usman brother already understood the whole issue. But the father-in-law gave the meher practice. Father in law gave it. Why? Because Hazrat Fatima radiallahu anha never need the king of the time to marry her. She needed a husband. And a husband doesn't mean a roof. A husband doesn't mean a top job. A husband means a man. That's all. Heaven on earth will come when our old stories go away. When the Jahannam that we caught with us, we push it one side, paradise falls. When customs come out of our life, you will see reality will fall in the life. As long as customs are there, it brings Jahannam in. Customs could be any custom. We laugh at customs. Almighty Allah's anger falls on customs. We laugh at customs because for us it looks funny. But Almighty Allah's anger falls on customs. The girl is getting married. It was the time of dua, dua, dua. Oh Allah, we are asking for paradise to come onto earth. But at that time, the girl is sitting in one room. They're calling it sweet meat, whatever they call it. One auntie is putting something in her mouth. Say, open your mouth. Ah, even that small child is laughing and says, can't she eat herself? When our small mommy used to feed me less. Now everyone is coming. By the time that poor bride finish eat everyone's sweet meats, three years later the doctor will say you got sugar diabetes. It all happened on day one because Jahannam fell on earth. That was not the time to bring the fire. But what we felt is bring the fire now. In three days time the nikah will take place. When the nikah comes we got a fire hose. We just shh, shh, no more fire. We burn them, burn them, burn them. But when I got my fire extinguisher, I'll cut off the fire. Then I lift up my head, hands and say, Oh Allah, let paradise come on earth. But we never said, Oh Allah, we brought Jahannam on our earth already. These customs are so unique, so unique. We laugh at it, Allah's anger comes. What and what happens in the house? For some people it's like a joke that day, one person is throwing eggs at the other, we're getting married tomorrow. So much wastage takes place because of that eggs. But with every egg being thrown for no reason, one part of Jahannam falls. One part of Jahannam. With every egg, with every egg. The end of the day, there is wastage left, right and center and Jahannam also landed on the ground. We want paradise in our lives. We will have to let that Jahannam be pushed to one side. Because Jannah doesn't normally come on earth. But it will be ready to join. But it will never be ready to join on top of Jahannam. And that's what me and you ask. We ask in the nikah, Qari Sahib will read a wonderful khirat. And then somebody else will sing a wonderful tune. Because if Jahannam is there and Jannah is there, the fire can be there. I got the fire extinguisher. Burn them left, right and center and then just shh. And happy ever after. Jannah paradise will land on earth, but it will not land on Jahannam. We will have to be ready to push Jahannam away. Then everything will happen. When our nazar connects with the zat of Allah, 
You will not forget your marriage will become heaven on earth. Your life will become. But Jahannam has to first be removed. We don't want to remove it. We have to push it out. If it's on your phone and that girl's number is there, you will have to erase that number before saying, Oh Allah, let me become happy with my wife. You can't keep that number and say, Oh Allah, let it happen and if it doesn't happen, okay, I'll phone her again. Jahannam and Jannah will not go together. You will have to let one go. But we don't want to. We want to be in Jahannam and saying, Oh Allah, let me not burn. You are told, if you don't want to burn, go to Jannah. You will have to get out of Jahannam. This is that paradise on earth. We don't want to let it go. We like addicted. Whatever we tell a person, when a person says, I've got a terrible problem, I'm stuck on porn. So we ask him, where you watch the porn? He say, on my phone. So he say, give away the phone. He say, no, I can't do that. Such a big mystery he brought for us to solve. The answer he also knew. Give away the phone. But what means I can't do that? That sentence means I don't want to do that. That's all. I don't want to do it. Not I can't. We'll have to come out of Jahannam. We'll have to push it away. We'll have to be ready to change our lives. Then with dua you will find paradise will come looking for you. It will fall. When it falls, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, Al-Mu'minu Ma'laf. A believer is a house of love. لا خير في من لا يعلف ولا يؤلف. That man who can't show love and who's not loved, there's no goodness in him at all. As soon as you go home, even if you fight with your wife, this narration will fall on your mind at night. That when my Nabi said that a believer is a man of love, and the man who can't show love, there's a problem with him. And the man who's not loved, there's a problem with him. So if my wife is angry with me, it means there's a problem with me. Because my Allah's Nabi said, no goodness in me. Forget her. All along I've been telling Morana, I need the Taweez to change her. Suddenly I learned, hey, I need to change me. Because my paradise will land on me. It will not land on her. And I'll end on this. There were many awliya of the past that their wives had a unique temper. Unique temper. To such an extent that some of them when they were passing away, they were see it was on my death, I'm asking my very close murids, muta'alliqs to look after my wife. Meaning they must see to her expenses. But I am not allowing anyone to ever think of getting married to her. And he wrote why he said that man will not manage. He not manage. He says, so I don't want to make my wife's, no one will manage with her. What he explained was if she enters anyone else's marriage, that man will hit her. He will abuse her because she had a temper. But how did he have paradise on earth? Because everyone's paradise lands even if everything around you is fire. All of us want paradise to land on earth. How? That my wife must change. Even if the wife does not change. And even if there's no wife. If Allah allows paradise to land in my life, I got Jannah on earth. Even if the person the closest to me is not with me. Even if the person closest to me is not with me, if I got a paradise on me, I'm living in paradise. We have so much of this that the things around must sort out and then minds will sort out. It doesn't happen that. On the day of Qiyamah, two people will be standing. One person will be next to the other, next to the other. But one will feel that Qiyamah is thousands of years, another will feel that it's only a churakat salah. How will two people next to each other be in two different time zones? One will be in Jahannam, one will be in Jannah. How? Because when Allah lets something fall, it falls on one person. In your own house, you can be getting paradise even if the whole house is against you. 
And in your own house you can be getting Jahannam even if everyone is enjoying life. It got to do with you. If you want paradise on earth, paradise in life, it got nothing to do with marriage. It got nothing to do with divorce. It got nothing to do with being rich. It got nothing to do with being poor. It got to do with that paradise comes from the creator of paradise. Allah Taala allows Jannah to fall on this earth. But it will not fall if Jahannam is already there. The demand will be push away Jahannam or you walk away from Jahannam. And then where you go, it will come with you. When you put your front eye towards paradise, the world will never leave you. But you will carry on enjoying the ride. And when your car turns and the world becomes your maqsad, every step, every one mile, you go away from paradise. It's not going to come with you then. May Allah tabarakta'ala put this in our heart. The creator of happiness is Allah. Huwa alladhi adhaka. He is the one who makes laugh. And it is that same Allah who makes cry. It is that Allah who makes laugh. It is the same Allah who makes cry. If that nazar can remain on Allah. And that man can move towards his creator. The entire world. Whatever it says. It will not be able to harm you. To such an extent, finally, you could be like a person like Ibrahim alayhi salam, where they will say, we'll throw you in the fire. And with that yaqeen, he would be able to say, even the fire of this world cannot burn me if my Allah wants me to be cool. He found a jannah in the fire. He found a jannah in the fire. Forget being married, not married, divorced. In the fire, he found paradise. We can't find it when we're living in the garden. Why? Because it comes from Allah, look for it from Allah. When that spice comes in life, you will enjoy your curry. Everybody else will start enjoying your curry. May Allah tabarakallah bless us all with those lives. The lives of Jannah in this world, lives of Jannah in the grave, lives of Jannah in the year after. May Allah Park let us enjoy living in paradise. But more important, may Allah let us enjoy living with the creator of paradise. Make that ta'aluk. Allah tabarakallah bless us all with this.